Welcome to Jason Whiskey Wise. My name is Jason. Welcome to this whiskey review where today we're going to be looking at the Nika 12 year old. So the Nika 12 year old is one of the top of the range from the Nika portfolio and it's not a single malt. It's a blend. It's a blend of whiskies from the Miyagikya and the Yoichi distillery where they combine the two together with a minimum age statement of 12 to produce this 12 year old Nika expression. So I poured myself a dram and I want to say first start the video off with a massive thank you to a guy called Eddie from Norway's of Soho as he was able to hook me up with a dram and donate it for the channel so we can sort of conclude this Nika series and actually we might have a couple other Japanese videos out in the upcoming days. So it's a 12 year old whiskey it's bottled at 43 percent it's a bit lower than the Miyagikyo and the Yaichi single malts in terms of the distilleries that combine together, it combines a little bit of grain from Miyagikyo and malt whiskey from Miyagikyo and malt whiskey from Yoichi to create this whiskey. Now the parent company is the Nika Whiskey Distilling Company Limited and the price point on this bottle is 95 pounds. Now it can also go up to 104, I think I saw recently on Amazon. So it can be around about 100 pounds here in the UK, so it gives you a good idea of the conversion into dollars or euros. And in terms of exclusivity, it's not exclusive as there's no bottle numbers anywhere on this one. So it's probably gonna be a core expression. So if you actually have missed my videos onto Miyagikyo and the Yoichi single malt, I did mention that there is a 10 and 12 year old expressions which produced in the past. And those things now are around about four, 500 pounds each for the 12 year olds. So this is a blend of those two coming together, which is, Kind of interesting, which we'll factor in at the end of the video, but let's just jump straight into the nose. Thinking things out on the nose for the Nika 12, you're getting quite a lot of sweetness from the nose. It actually kind of reminds me of the Kofi grain, which I, I tasted a couple videos back, but a lot of fudge on this one, baked apples, sweet tangerines. And it actually reminds me in terms of specific apple groups, it reminds me of a Bramley apple, but a red Bramley apple. I do get a little bit of polished oak as well on the end of this one, which is very interesting. The first time in the whole Nika series, I'm picking up polished oak. Could be to the age character. There is a little bit of pear as well, which develops ever so slightly, but a little bit of citrus really reaches back and starts to really activate itself. There is a bit of honeyed cinnamon. And there is for me what I find almost like double cream, giving a nice creamy approach, but then there is that fruity aspect. So the two are sort of interlinking. It's quite a creamy, rounded whiskey on the nose. That could be a good sign for the palate. Let's find out what's in the palate next. Slanger. First up on the actual palate for this whiskey, you're getting lots of citrusy characters, these grapefruits, these lemons. You're then getting a little bit of orange, but then you're getting these tarty green apples, almost like an apple crumble inside. Not so much sweeter, but then it makes way for some stone fruits, a bit of peach, a bit of apricot, there's even a little bit of a honeyed character as well, maybe a honey blossom, adding a slight floral note. Then you are getting a little bit of pears, but this is like ripe red pears in season. And then you are picking up a little bit of a drier fruity character of a sultana. And it's, it's then sort of developing into dry fruity characters. It's not really going back into that dry, sort of rich fruity character. It's now more moving into those dry fruity characters as you get a little bit of stem ginger, and it's got overall a medium texture on this whiskey. It's not as rich and viscous as say the Miyagikyo or even the Yoichi single malts were. So let's get into the finish and we'll come to our conclusion on the Nika 12. So my overall opinions on the finish of this whiskey, it does have a lot of textures on the finish. You're getting ripe Seville oranges you're getting also pineapple rings, as if you've opened those from a tin directly, and they're quite juicy and succulent. You're getting a bit of sultanas, grapefruit zest, a little bit of even the pith from the grapefruit, and then a nice toffee sweetness, leaving quite a nice long finish. And there's a little bit of vanilla fudge as well, wrapping it all together. I find that to be almost the house style through most of the Nika whiskeys. But in terms of that, I'm gonna give you my rating and give you my overall opinion on this whiskey. And I think I'm gonna give it here I'm gonna give this one an 88 out of 100. In terms of blends and looking at the Nika blends and also the Nika whole range as a whole, for this one, I'm kind of putting it in the spectrum that I've got to look at. It's a very clean, crisp Japanese whiskey. It ticks all the boxes 
when you look at a Japanese style, but at the same time, it delivers a little bit more. Now, when I'm looking at the price point, I'm looking at £100. I'm comparing it to other £100 whiskies, like, say, for example, in Suntory's range, Yamazaki 12, Akshu 12. And for me, this one has got, it's a good competitor in there. When I look at the Nika's sort of Miyagikiya 12 and the Yoichi 12 at three, four hundred pounds, five hundred pounds, those I'm not even thinking about at the minute because those are ridiculous prices. Um, but for me, the Nika 12 just, it does something really well. It's got those tropical fruity characters. It's got those, even those standard apples and pears that come through. And it's just got something that's really nice and enjoyable about it. Now, do I think it's value for money at a hundred pounds? Nowadays, in this day and age, Japanese whiskey is averaging at £100, so I'm going to sort of put it on par, but I, I would like to see a little price lower, around about 70 to 80 um, In terms of does it need water, does it need time, or how does it react with those two? With water, it does bring out this little character of almost more of a fruitier profile, and it brings out a little bit more aromatics, so the nose actually develops a lot more when you do add water. Whenever you give it time, though, for this whiskey, so now adding the time factor, it does bring out a lot more of these apples and pears and these stewed fruits that really come through and less of almost these sort of drier profiles. So it really brings a bit of dimension if you add a bit of water and give it some time, you're looking at a lot more from your whiskey than what you initially anticipated of just having it neat. So in that whole sort of overall conclusion, it's a good whiskey. It's got a great balance, complexity. 80 out of 100 is my score. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. I'm going to leave, if you guys have enjoyed the video, drop it a like. I'll leave the subscribe button over there. And I'll leave some other whiskey videos on screen from the Nika portfolio. But this has been me, Jason Whiskey Wise, and I'll catch you all for the next video. Slanja.